What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Flask tutorial video. In this video what we're going to be talking about is Flask Mail. So Flask Mail is actually pretty powerful uh, for mailing within Flask. So powerful that honestly I would probably use it even if I didn't have a web application. I don't know of any other mailing with Python uh, service or module that you can use that is as simple to use as this yet as powerful. So this is the link to it. I'll try to remember to put it in the description if I forget. Uh, you can either ask or you can just Google flash dash mail. And uh, it's definitely something you should look at, but we'll kind of zoom through uh, just the basic sending an email, doing you know subjects, text, and HTML in the email. Uh, just keep that in mind to head there if you have anything else you want to look for. So uh, the first thing you have to do is you got to install it. So if you're installing to the virtual, <laughs> someone asked a question: How does uh, how do how how does our server know whether or not we're in the virtual environment? Right? Like remember we we set up the virtual environment in the beginning. Well, <laughs> for most of this tutorial, we haven't actually been using the virtual environment. I mean, it's there if you want to use it. Uh, but we haven't really been using it, so you can either install the virtual environment if you want, or uh, just to your server. For me, I've always just used servers, and I rare like if I'm going to move a server, I generally take a snapshot of the server and then move it. So I've never really had the need for a virtual environment. But if you're going to host it to GitHub or something like that, and you want people to just be able to download it, uh, a virtual environment can be a better option. So, anyways, uh, moving along. Uh, but but on GitHub there is a requirements so if someone copied it they could automatically install the Python libraries anyways. Anyway, moving along. So you'll need to do you know your sudo pip install uh, flask dash mail. I can't remember if it has caps or not, but yeah it does. It's capital F capital M. Anyway, install flask dash mail. Flask dash mail. I already have it, so uh, this won't really do anything. But uh, so you'll get that and then you're ready to rumble from this point. So um, the first thing that we'll do is we'll head to the init.py. And once that's up, what you'll want to do is um, SMTP lib. I believe we were using that to notify using an older emailing tactic I have. That one is just really easy to send a quick email, but you can't really customize very much. Uh, so anyway, just in case you were curious, what uh, you shouldn't have to import SMTP lib uh, if you're not using my emailing thing. So we've got import SMTP lib, but then what we're going to want to do is we're going to do uh, from flask underscore mail import mail. And then we're also going to wind up needing message, so import message as well. That's one thing I don't like about this documentation. If you go through this documentation, you see um, that you have to import Flask. Of course, you got to import the mail, and then they've got mail, app, and then you get all the way down here to sending messages. And if you forget to do the whole Flask import message, you're going to get an error that message not defined. Um, the first time I went through this, I didn't realize that. The other thing that I didn't like is, let's see, up here. Yeah, when you define mail here, um, you can configure this in a, in a variety of ways, but generally, I, at least from what I've seen, most people configure it within their application. So this again throws people for a loop and I'll explain why uh, here in a second. So uh, moving this out of the way, you'll want to do again from Flask Mail import uh, the mail and message. Next, what we want to do is uh, underneath the definition of app equals Flask name, what you're going to want to have is some some configuration. Now I've got this on the um, the sample to sample code, the tutorial text based tutorial Python program.net. So I'll link to that in the description. So I'm just going to copy and paste because there's really no not much point to <laughs> write all this out. And I'll, let me just explain it. So debug is is just set to true. Uh, I'm fairly certain the only thing that that is is basically if the email fails for whatever reason, the error that will be displayed is the actual error. So on a live server, you might not want debug true because it might show, like if somebody's trying to figure something out, it'll show them the exact error. And that's helpful for, for debugging, right? Uh, and that's also helpful for, for hacking into something. So you would want to set that eventually to false uh, at, if you're going to use it in production and just set it to true when you're just simply trying to debug. 
Mail server, I have it set to the Gmail server because I was going to I use a Gmail account and then also I you know using a Gmail account just seems to be the best. Also Gmail rarely goes to spam as opposed to a lot of other emails that you might send automatically, though they wind up in spam very often. Uh, mail port 465, there is another one. I forget what the other one is. It's like 26 maybe or 500 something. I don't know. You can look those up, but 465 should work. No problem. Use SSL. Cool. And then here is where you'd enter your actual email address and your actual password. If you wanted, you could use encryption to encrypt this password and then have your little key decrypt it right as it went to send. Really doesn't matter. Um, it's just if you wanted to hide it basically in your script, you could do that. After all of that, you need to say mail equals mail app. And you have to do this definition after the configuration, otherwise you're going to get some problems. Now what you would want to do is come down somewhere and start the mailing. Uh, so like if you wanted to mail, let's say, we'll just copy this. Uh, you would come down here and paste let's say let's just call this send underscore mail and then let's say the URL you were gonna visit was send mail and basically you probably you should have try and accept here especially if you've got debugging exception as e return string e and uh, what you're gonna try to do is you're gonna try to send an email and for example I think what I'll do probably yeah I'm just gonna copy and paste this again no real point in wasting a bunch of time writing that out and then return, you gotta return something, otherwise you're gonna get a 500 error. So we'll just say mail sent. So a lot of times you're gonna send mail and you're gonna return an actual you know, HTML template. So uh, I'll talk about a real example that I've been using anyway here in a second. But at the very basic level, this is all you would need to do to send an email. So here you've got the, the, the message, right? The message is uh, basically, class okay so you it's an object from a class and so you've got message and you're just saying that is e the equivalent of the message uh, it's a message object from flask mail this is the subject of the email then you've got sender this would be who it's coming from then you've got recipients these will, this could be just a single recipient or you could put a huge list of recipients in there although if you put a massive list you may wind up in spam and then uh, this is the body. So this would be simple text, right? So you can use like a new line to create a new line, but that's about as fancy as you're gonna get as far as, uh, you know, styling your email. So when, whenever you're ready to send it, just mail.send message. And if everything was successful, it'll say mail sent. Otherwise you'll get a, an exception. Now, Here's the problem. Sometimes what you're going to find is the uh, things just don't work out for you. So, for example, let's go to my website using uh, this. Let's say let's save that. Uh, come over here and let's restart here. Pseudo. There we go. Okay. So then we'll head to. Let me go to uh, this. So I'm on the, the server, and then if we go slash send mail, uh, well, at least, oh, well, I don't have the right username and password in there, but you'll, you'll get an error that looks an awful lot like that. Okay, so probably the more popular error that you're going to get is not that your password is wrong, but you'll get an error that looks like this. Let me just do this. Okay. Uh, and it's going to be like, hey, you know, please log into your web browser, blah, blah, blah. Learn more at this link here. Okay. So you'll go to that and it'll basically be in, in like some information on why you might not be able to log in. Uh, and that would be here. So this gives you a bunch of options. You can, um, if you've got two-factor two authentication, you need to set up an app password, which Google will tell you the same thing. But... Obviously, that kind of nullifies your 2FA, okay? I mean, it's not total, it's it's a little more secure than not having 2FA, but at the end of the day, you've got an app password that uh, circumvents two-factor authentication. So I would not use this on any email you want to have 2FA on. Next up, you've got this. Um, this just says sometimes if you just sign into Google, you can access the app or you can basically run it through your app again. That's really never been the case for me, but you can try it. 
Uh, then also there's this, you can turn off display unlock captcha. Basically what I understand this to be is Google realizes it's a program, so it sends it, it tries to get it to solve a captcha, and that's like a security measure for your account so people don't just brute force your account. But uh, in this case, uh, we don't want that. We don't want that captcha because we're not solving that captcha, so you want to turn that off. Uh, then next, you have to always allow less secure apps to access the account. That's always the case on Gmail. Uh, and then otherwise, there's these two things which have never been the case. Now, even if you do all of that, you might still be shut out of your account. And uh, that's what's happening to me on this server. And I think, I don't know for sure, Google doesn't really tell you this, but uh, my guess, it, it has nothing to do with the, the email itself, the Gmail, because I use the exact same Gmail on my other servers, no problem. But on this one, I, I think the problem is this is like a, this is a, you know, it's just a, first of all, it's just an IP. There's no uh, domain that's associated with it. There's really no, uh, there's nothing for, there's like, like no reputation to the server. And I think that's why Google is saying no. And it's probably for like anti-spam. So obviously if you can send emails via a program, uh, spammers, that's what spammers want to do. It's really easy to sign up for a Gmail. So this is kind of Gmail's way of making it easy for legit people to sign up, but hard for programs to sign up. So anyway, uh, that's that. So if you're trying to do this and for whatever reason it's not working, it might be your server, try to like maybe link a domain name to it. A lot of times as long as there's a domain name, it works. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that aside, moving along, uh, I'm going to show you the code that I run with um, pythonprogramming.net, the actual code. So let me get rid of this uh, line here. And basically what, what I do is uh, this would be from the forgot password uh, from Python programming at net. So basically what we send here is, oops, we need to go over one more. Uh, and that's coming from here. Let me go to the Python programming .net. And should you go to log in and for whatever reason you can't figure it out, you go to forgot password and uh, you just fill in your username and it sends you an email with a special link and stuff like that. So the way that works is here, uh, once everything checks out, if that username exists and all that, the sender is gonna be pythonprogramming.net at gmail.com. The recipients will be whatever that person's email address. We find that in the database and then we come down here, the message body is just gonna be, uh, this, is, this is if the user does not, cause you'll notice there's a body and an HTML. Body is for if, uh, if the user, for whatever reason, is on a device that can't read HTML. So if they're on like a really old school phone or something like that, like if, you're, if your clientele is like emerging markets, uh, you might want to think about having both of these. Otherwise, you probably don't need both, but it's always good to have them just in case. Uh, and then after that, we got message HTML. This appears to me to be the default, uh, no matter what. I always send these two, and the one that I've always seen is this. What's neat about the HTML, as you probably have seen as time has gone on, is a lot of companies have very good looking emails. They've got pictures and it's they've got style sheets going with them and stuff. Uh, and you can do that too. So uh, sending this uh, HTML, it renders this template mails reset password.html. And that HTML is actually really, 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 really simple. Uh, but you, you can do some pretty advanced HTML, but this HTML is, that I use is pretty simple. I'm just gonna paste it on in here uh, like that. So it is, it's just like any other template. You can pass variables to it. This one just uses paragraphs uh, and it also uses a dynamic link, right? So, or a link that you can actually click, right? Uh, and so it's not like the most advanced uh, HTML, but that's just a basic example of it. Yep, yep, you can have a, t uh, a template and load simple HTML. Obviously, if you go too crazy, you have too many images and stuff, I wouldn't rely on that because a lot of, uh, a lot of emails are gonna just naturally not show the images and the user has to select yes, show images. So I wouldn't really rely too heavily on images, but as far as styling is concerned and divs and all kinds of cool stuff, uh, you can make your emails look, look pretty darn cool. So anyways, uh, that's just a quick Flask email kind of tutorial. It's, I think it's, like I said, it's like the best mailing <laughs> that I've ever found with, with Python because it's just so simple. You've got your subject, you send, receive, your body, HTML, and setting it up is as easy as this right here, right? 
So super easy, super quick, super reliable. Um, the only problems I've had is the email just simply not going through even though everything's right. And like I said, I think that really, obviously you have to go through the other options. You will have to turn on less secure apps and display unlock captcha. Uh, but if you go through all that and it's still not working, it's probably just your server and it's the anti-spam me spam measures from Google. Anyway, other than that, if you guys are still having trouble or whatever, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll do my best to help you out. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about returning files. So, you know, we return templates all the time, but what if you have like some sort of download button or something like that where you want the user to be able to download something? Or maybe you've got like a PDF. Uh, and you want to return a PDF, uh, how would you actually do that? So that's what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial. So stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks for watching.